Hello. Hi guys. I'm going to give it a few minutes before I start talking to see who else goes on. Hi. Hey everybody. All right, so I'll just kind of get started a little bit. I'm Megan Boyer um, with Megan Boyer Photography and with Little Bellows. And um, I think it was last week or two weeks ago, I did a little like review and tutorial on the Rolleiflex. So I asked around a little bit and to see what camera you thought um, people would want to see next. So I'm going to talk about the Hasselblad H1, which is a 645 format. Um, post any questions. I'm going to do a little follow up and post this video on to the Little Bella's blog later this week. And I'll include the video and I'll include like kind of my write up about um, why I love this H1 and kind of the, the perks to it. So I've owned a lot of 645 format cameras, like a lot of them. And um, I started with a Mamiya 645 and then I went to a Pentax and then I went to a Contax and then, um, then the H1. So they're all similar and they're all different. And really what it comes down to a lot is um, uh, your personal preference. You know, like it's gotta feel good in your hands. Um, it's got to just kind of fit your flow and not every camera is going to do that. Um, this one just happens to fit my flow a little bit better. Um, so here it is. This is what it looks like. It's a little, you know, beat up and loved. I've looks like I've taken bites out of my eyepiece. Um, I haven't. I'm just not the most gentle person with my gear, unfortunately. Um, but the great thing is, is that they still make Hasselblads. So you can get replacement parts easily. I mean, they're Hasselblad, they're not cheap, but at least they're there and they're less expensive than a lot of the parts for like a Contax or some of the other cameras that they don't even make anymore. So I could replace this, but I know me and I'm gonna end up picking at it and it's gonna fall off anyway. So um, so this is the back. Look, you can see I got it at Adorama. <laughs> used, here's the insert. This is just saw. Um, here's the other side. This is um, where you would, the dark side, it's not when you have to pull out and lose, which is awesome because I always forgot about it. Um, not which way did I go? So once you have that dark side in, you can take this off. And I always forget which way because I pretty much leave the same back on all the time. So, it, but it's really easy to do. Um, so you just put it right back on and then put that dark side right back down. Um, over here is like little sinky things and it has a hot shoe. Um, so all of these little buttons over here, I love. And I love the display. Oh, I guess I should turn it on, huh? I love the display. Let's see if you can see that. Because, oh, it's upside down. <laughs> so it's, is that right? Oh, I can't tell. Nope, I'm a silly goose. Okay, <laughs> there, maybe you can see that. It's digital, which if you're a hybrid photographer, um, which I am, um, it just makes it kind of easier to flow when you're switching between, you know, your digital and this. It's the same display. It's a really similar feeling and flow. The buttons are the same. So like the contacts and almost all the other, I think all the other 645s that I've had, the aperture ring is here and that's how you move it. So it's really easy to like, when you're holding it or something, to knock it out of place and forget to go check it, which is something that people um, talk about a lot of times with the contacts. And I did it too. It's so easy and it's loose. Um, so you change it right here and it's really hard to knock it out. Um, you know, shutter speed is this, aperture is this, it's so easy. Um, this does autofocus, which, um, I didn't want in my first couple cameras because I was stubborn and I wanted to be cool and manual focus. I could do that. Um, so I can do it and sometimes I do, but then after like a couple years, I was like, okay, I, now that I know I can do that, I'm ready for autofocus. The contacts had autofocus, um, but it sucked. For me, it sucked. It was really, really slow and all the time you could just hear it like searching for focus. Um, and what's the point of having slow autofocus? I can manually focus it faster than the auto could on that camera. 
And my Pentax, um, I had the 645N that also had autofocus, but I didn't have any autofocus lenses because I pre preferred the 6.7 format lenses with that camera. So this is the first um, medium format that I've had where I use the autofocus pretty much every shot. Um, and I set it, there's little buttons back here. Um, there's like a user button. And I have set it so that's my back button focus. And it's so easy, it's so fast, it's just right here. I love how it feels in my hand. And that's why this is like my perfect camera. I loved my shots from the contacts. It was a little too easy um, and too lightweight and too, I don't know, it just, it was. It was a really easy to camera to shoot and love. But were the buttons where it didn't feel, it didn't flow right with me. So when I, I rented this before I bought it, and um, you can do that from like analogrental.com. Yeah, I want, it's awesome, Sandy. You should get one. <laughs> um, but I rented it first, and then um, as soon as I had it and I shot a couple frames off, I was searching the internet to buy one. And before um, I had even sent the rental back, I had one already ordered. <laughs> um, and they're fairly easy to find, and they're so much cheaper than a contacts, which is nice because to pay... Um, a lot of money for something, you know, it's, is hard and all cameras are going to be expensive, but it's nice when you can find a nice reliable body that, um, is a little bit more reasonably priced. I'm going to load it real quick and show you, um, how it's pretty easy if you've had a, you know, six foot five with an insert, I'm sure you already know how to do this, but just in case, um, just flip these around. If anybody has questions, throw them at me. Um, if there's anything that you have questions with after this video, um, I will be posting on um, the website an article about it. So um, I have a shoot later today with my niece. I'm picking her up from her preschool and I'm doing a fun little shoot with her in my studio. So I'm going to load up some, um, some Fuji because that's what I'm going to use. She's really, really fair. Go figure. Look at me. I'm like powder. Um, okay. Super simple. Um, and I, a lot of people like don't want to stop. That's one of the things I hear a lot about, um, you know, shooting film, shooting 120 as opposed to like 35 where you only get, you know, 16 frames. Um, but I have a couple pre, um, I have a couple other inserts and I have another, I have a couple other backs. I just never change the backs because I just, I'm pretty much always shooting the same thing. So I just have a couple of inserts. So I just reloaded in there. Um, but during a session, I like the break of it. Like I like, we're in the middle of doing something. I'm shooting, 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 16 frames. Sometimes I'll pick up my, like a 35 or, or my rolly or something to like get a, another angle of the same thing in a different format. But um, then it's nice to stop and, hi Joyce, it's nice to stop and just reload, take a second. Sometimes I'll even just reload it and not even use one of my pre-filled pre, um, inserts. But I just like the break of it. Like it kind of it gives me a chance to talk to the parents if it's a newborn shoot and kind of like put them at ease, ask them questions, like, you know, be social with them. They're in your studio. They're in my studio. So I want to make sure that, um, you know, I'm not ignoring them because it's really easy for me to just zone out. They're over there on the couch. If we've already taken their photos, then I'm just focusing on the baby and it's it would be really easy for me to forget they were there. So it does. It slows me down. It makes everything a little bit more intentional because we all know it ain't cheap. So 16 frames, um, it's not a lot. But when you're intentional about it, you'll hit every single one. You know, it's really rare that I'll miss focus or do something silly. And it's always, always, always my fault. So, um, so it's really easy. Um, all of your, like, you can change your autofocus, your drive. Um, there's a lot of options here in the menu. Um, it's easy to sync with strobes. Um, and the um, sync speed is really high too. It's like 800, I think. So you have a lot of options with this. Um, H1 versus the contacts. So for me, um, I one of the reasons I prefer this is the layout of kind of where the buttons are. So that having the aperture here instead of at a, at a ring on the lens, it makes me not accidentally put it into like, 
you know, F11 when I have all my settings in there for like F2 or 2.8 or something, um, which is really easy to do. You don't have to like pay attention to that a whole lot more. And I'm not really good at paying attention. <laughs> I tend to just like get in the mode and just shoot. And I very rarely touch my settings once I've metered in my studio or um, if I even meter, I kind of know what the settings are now that I shoot there so much. Um, so that's really one reason. The other reason is that um, it feels more substantial. The context was a little bit lighter, which a lot of people would prefer, but not me. Like I like to have the weight of it in my hand. It makes it feel, I don't know, like a real camera to me, which is so dumb. The context is real, obviously, but it's just my weird thing about it. Like it's all a personal preference, like I said. Um, I also like um, that the, um, the autofocus is amazing. Um, and it's so much faster than the contacts. Like it's, it's like apples and oranges to compare it. Like sometimes I'll look at a photo with this and I'm like, is that too sharp? Like it's so nailed and it's so easy to get that it's, that it's, um, is it too sharp? So Joyce, yes, you can see up in here, if you can see that, I don't know if I have it backwards or not. I'm not very good with that mirror thing. Um, but you can see your aperture and everything else right in here, in this right here. Um, in the little like digital settings place. It's, it's awesome. The meter on this is also super reliable and it's really easy to meter with this. So sometimes, um, and I've compared like my handheld and this, um, you can set on the back, like, well, yeah, I'll, I'll take this off. Let me put this dark slide up and I'll show you on the back here. Cause I loaded this. Um, there's also a little thing here on the back. So it ha you can set your speed, it'll show you um, what frame you're on and all of that. So you set that to, if you're going to use the internal meter, to whatever you would shoot, uh, whatever you're rating it at, which I always rate box speed. And then, um, I wish I could show you the viewfinder, I don't know how to do that. But through here, you know, it's got a little meter in there and it's great. So if you want it to be overexposed, um, it's really, really easy to do that. The, there's not really a big difference between the H1 and H2 per se. Um, the the body style is basically the same. It's just kind of like the updated one. Like um, it's not even. I was going to compare it to like a Mark a Canon Mark II versus a Canon Mark III, but that's a huge difference. So that's not really comparable. Um, I think you can go higher shutter speed on the H2. I don't really remember. Um, but there's really, it's kind of, they're pretty much the same thing. There's maybe like one or two minimal differences, but nothing that's significant enough to make one really better than the other. Um, the H2 is a little bit more expensive because it's newer. It's kind of just like the newer model, although it's not new. But um, if you, you know, have an extra 15 grand you want to drop, you can get a nice little digital back on this as well, um, which I think would be pretty cool. Um, it does not have a Zeiss lens. So this is made by Fuji. Um, also the Fuji, what's it called? GX or something like that. I forget what it's called, but it's like the same exact body. So you might see those when you're looking for these. Um, so this, you know, it's a Hasselblad lens. Um, and you know, it's 80 millimeter and 2.8. Um, Contax has a Zeiss, which is 80, um, 2.0. So, um, you know, there's a little bit difference there, but I don't find this restricting at all because I shoot um, a 2.8, 4.0 most of the time. The battery life on this is significantly longer than it is with the contacts. Um, you can also have like recharge, like a rechargeable thing, which I have. I don't even, I bought the thing because it was a great price, but I don't even have like the actual charger. So one day I'll get that. But um, it's really easy to just take out this cartridge and it's just three, um, uh, where are they? The CR whatever, CR123. It's just right in here. But with the contacts, I had to change them all the time. Um, it lasted maybe a shoot. Like d during a wedding, when I did weddings, um, it was so frustrating because um, I would run out of battery really, really, really easily. So, um, you know, there's a lot of perks, in my opinion, <laughs> to this. And... Um, the screen, also the screen is also kind of a factor sometimes for cameras. I find that the stock screen on this is just as bright as um, my contacts, and my contacts had a maximal bright screen. Um, I, I, I don't see much of a difference whatsoever. So there's a lot of perks.
but I love it. It's easy to find. You can go in KH, EA, try not to get one with a chomped on thing. Um, what else didn't I show you? I kind of feel like that might be it. There's like a little like thing for your, what's that called, <laughs> diopter, um, to make sure your focus is right on if you're, uh, stop, if you're doing manual. I don't know. I really dig it. Um, so, and you can always rent one, always, um, which I always recommend if you're going to drop a couple grand on anything. Um, I say rent it first to make sure it really fits you because they're all different. Um, they all have their perks and stuff, but they're all a little bit different. So, um, I can also answer any questions about the Contex or the Pentex or the Mamiya. Um, I'm kind of a camera hoarder, so I've probably owned most of them. Um, so, um, if that's it, thanks for watching. And um, again, I'll post this on the um, Little Bella's post when I talk more in depth a little bit about it um, and write the article for probably tomorrow. Um, so, that's it. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.